Hello, this is a solo negocios video blog for the week number seven on 2022 with the best information on the economy and the legal context in Mexico. Beginning with the indicators reported last week, the US International Trading Goods and Services for December 2021 was reported by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. And basically it showed the result of the deficit was 80.7 billion in December uh, in US dollars, obviously. $1.4 billion up from the 79.3 billion in November revised data. Then uh, basically we can see in the graph that the deficit is increasing, the monthly def deficit as well as the three month average, but steady between November and December. Given the recovery of the economy on 2022, on 2020 and 2021, the deficit expanded even more to what it was happening uh, during the last four years. Then the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, exposed the producer price index, which increased 1.1% in January, seasonally adjusted. And this was followed by 0.4% in December and 0.9% last November. The index for final demand services rose 0.7%. And prices for final demand goods in the US moved up 1.3%. And we can see the graphs where the monthly basis uh, index is increasing in the final demand and final demand goods, but not necessarily in the final demand services. In a 12 month percentage comparison, it's steady uh, since October, mainly, well, since November, for the final demand and final goods but not necessarily for final demand services, which is decreasing a little bit. The Fed minutes were uh, released uh, for the meeting on January 27, 26 it was, and the uh, decisions to keep the rate on zero to 0.25% federal funds rate target, target range, as well as keep the uh, system of open market accounts holdings for treasury uh, securities for $40 billion and agency mortgage backed securities for $20 billion as indicated in the plans released in January. But we know that by March, they will should, uh, begin uh, decreasing these uh, purchases in, in a very wide uh, aspect. Very, Bureau of Labor Statistics reports also the US Import and Export Prices Index in January 2022, where it advanced 2% in January following 0.4% drop in December. So it's, it's increasing again the pressure for price indexes in imports, as well as exports that rose 2.9% in January after declining 1.6% in December. And obviously, given that Mexico imports a lot of the US or from the US, well, obviously, that increase in export price will hit us in prices. We can see the uh, monthly basis uh, growth of 2% here in the graph and also a 10.8% 10 per, 10 yearly basis increase, which is a little bit over what happened in December, but given the increase on the monthly basis, it shows uh, an important impact in import prices and in export prices, Seems steady, but the monthly increase it's it's uh, strong given the decrease in December. Inegi then reported the National Occupation and Employment uh, Survey, which sta uh, states the unemployment in Mexico, and basically from the 15 year olds and older people in Mexico accounts for 98.5 million inhabitants. And from that 100%, 59.7% is the economic active population and the rest 40.3% is the non-economic active population. From the economic active population, we have 3.7% uh, in unemployment. That's our rate. And now the non-economic active population, we have and defer the non-available people to work accounting for 81.2%. And the people willing to work but they cannot do it. Maybe they're taking care of kids or someone 
with health problems or older people. So this accounts for 18.8%, which is a very important figure, yet not uh, recovered a lot from pre-pandemic data, but it's recovering. Now, there we can see the inequity between men and women, where women account for 4.6 million uh, women, which are willing to go back to work, but cannot do it. And in terms of uh, men, it's 2.8 million. So obviously there is inequity shown there. Uh, also the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, reported the state job openings and labor turnover for December, 2021 with uh, job opening rates increased in seven states, decreased in four states, a little changed in 39 states. Showing the map, Texas, California, New York, the richest states are not growing much in job openings. And obviously it's important in terms of expenditure and then um, new orders for trade, for commerce, commercial companies, and also then new orders for manufacturing companies and then new orders for maquiladora companies in Mexico. So obviously it's beginning, it's, it's uh, keep growing the, the, the employment in the US, but it's not necessarily in the most rich areas where obviously we will be able to see a higher expenditure position. Then the Department of Labor of the US reported unemployment insurance weekly claims with an initial claim in the last week for 248,000 persons or claims with an increase of 30, 23,000 from previous week. The four week moving average was 1.6 million uh, actual claims or current claims with a decrease of 7,700 uh, claims. So it's beginning to put in a flat position. The initial claims climbed during February to the beginning of February, given Omicron and COVID-19, but it decreased. And the uh, general uh, amount of people with claims are decreasing, but in a very flat position. Then Inehi exposed the uh, economic activity in advanced uh, indicator, which is advanced for the global economic activity indicator, which is at was GDP, which is a uh, monthly basis. Remember, GDP is quarterly basis. Well, the UI, the advanced data for this one on January, increased in a yearly basis on 0.7%, where uh, secondary activities uh, increased 2.1% and tertiary activities 0.1%. But the monthly basis decrease for the whole data on 0.1%, the secondary activities decrease monthly basis again, 0.4% and no change in the tertiary activities. So the improve in a yearly basis is maybe low compared to what could be expected for the recovery year after the pandemic initiated in 2020. But the monthly basis decreased is showing us attention because the Mexican economy is flattened down. It's, it's going flat and it's going trending down. It's not good. It brings opportunities. Don't, don't, don't uh, forget that, but it's going down. We had two important uh, precedents from the courts uh, provided by ANADE. One is uh, regarding the constitutional regularity control that jurisdictional organs in the judicial power of the federation should execute to meet amparo directo and indirecto, which implies the defense against acts or laws that affect human rights on Mexicans or people in Mexico, which uh, is basically a procedural, a procedural decision on how it has to be achieved to meet this type of lawsuits also, the other important one was the tax under the tax codes. And this is given these uh, taxpayer lists on Article 69, uh, paragraph B and six paragraph, uh, subpart B and six paragraph of the tax uh, federation code, which implies that the tax authority uh, in, in the middle of a claim, a judicial claim by a taxpayer that is not agreeing on being on that list. It's a, it's a black list, it's a list that shows people that is not uh, executing actually 
the invoices that are being paid and deducted from the taxes. Well, that, that is another procedural uh, element of resolution from the court. But basically, the position is to stabilize how to uh, respond to a resolution of this type of courts. Then the legislative radar from ANADE shows some new initiative laws that are being discussed at Congress. One is regarding anti-corruption and the uh, acquisitions, leasing, and uh, public sector law, which is under the Federal Public Administration law. And it's basically a set of uh, integrity and uh, actions to prevent corruption by companies selling to the government. So it's a proposal to do that. Also, there is a proposal to change the constitution in terms of the same subject, corruption. And they want to create the Public Function Institute, an autonomous organization not subordinated to the executive power to overview and be able to sanction those public officers that might be uh, incurring in corruptive practices. Nowadays, in Mexico, the entity that is similar to this public function institute is a public function secretariat, which is basically under the power of the president. So if the president or someone, someone in, a, in a secretarial level in course in corruption, they regularly are not uh, investigated at, at least uh, satisfying perspective of public, you know? So this is interesting. Now, uh, there's another initiative regarding a labor law. There are several initiatives under labor law, but one that claims my attention is that for um, workers working uh, away from the working site, like at home, home office, the, the position to um, disconnect, the right to disconnect is a right for workers to not have contact or participate by any means or any related activity towards uh, labor when the, the labor day is over. So it's to set rest times, basically. You know, like your boss sending you WhatsApp messages or any type of emails or other communications at night or something like that, you know? So how to avoid it? It's a proposal to do that. And also uh, changing the Article 123 of the Mexican Constitution to expose that social security institutions should uh, tie the minimum wage to the retirement uh, position and warranty labor rights to workers when they retire. The issue here is the court, the, the federal court, the, the federal Supreme Court uh, resolved that the pensions and retirement uh, fees, not fees, but the entitlement to them, will be calculated with the actualization system of Mexico, which is the UMA, which is tied to inflation, but is lower than the increases in, in minimum wage. So the, the, the expectations is that your retirement should be updated every year, not in an inflationary way, but in a minimum wage uh, perspective. Now, what events we will have uh, next uh, next week in Mexico regarding law and well, mainly financial perspectives. Well, we have the uh, Social Security Technical Committee from IMEF showing the financial impact of the rate, uh, the risk rate for workers, and the reform of outsourcing and under COVID context will be interesting next Tuesday. We will also have a retirement integral analysis also by IMEF, by IMEF Guanajuato. And Nadia at the National Frame will show the uh, how the company will react to the energetic contra reform or counter reform that is being discussed at Congress. We will have also on Wednesday by IMEF the Ciudad de Mexico IMEF uh, meeting, monthly meeting, and they will talk about monetary uh, policy and inflation, which is a very hot topic nowadays. Also on Thursday, the National Technical Committee of Corporate Finance will talk about migration of, of payroll to digital and its aggregated, aggregated value. 
Also, we will show the, uh, we'll have the energetic transition uh, by Anade Querétaro and its uh, energy law committee. Also, we have on Thursday, the, uh, in the, Mexi uh, the, the IMEF indicator uh, quarterly uh, event, this time named Economy and Business Two Years After the Pandemic, Lessons and Perspectives, and very important economists participating with this event. Uh, for those persons that are registered in the IMEF indicator, this event is for free. For those not registered, general public, 500 pesos for the event. Also, we have uh, the importance of money laundering prevention by Monex in uh, case study as a success case study specifically. And the National Technical Committee for IMEF on transfer prices. They will talk about uh, updated and specific uh, ninth nine, nine annex from the multiple informative declaration for companies related to transfer price obligations. Also, another Tamaulipas, we have the uh, business responsibility and benefits from being an analyst as a lawyer. Uh, we will have that also. And we invite you to keep connecting to the another podcast each week. We have currently the 45th episode talking about 2022 perspectives, the legislative agenda for this year. What other indicators and uh, elements we have next week in, in general terms and obviously important. Well, we have uh, on Monday, the President's Day in the US. So it will be a close day in most indicators and influence of their markets worldwide. But there will be several PMI indicators in Europe being released. By Thursday, we will have the GDP for fourth quarter in the US with um, basically second revision. And we will have on Friday several import prices and GDP uh, data for Europe, as well as in the US personal consumption. In Mexico, in the, he will release the manufacturing uh, industry survey, the monthly one, also the commercial activities or retail and uh, wholesale um, survey, the monthly survey, also the construction monthly survey, and services monthly survey. We will have also the uh, inflation data for second, uh, the second by week uh, of, ja of June, of, uh, excuse me, February, and actually the economic activity for global indicator for the month of December. We already had the advanced data last month showing a decrease, so we will compare it to the actual data. And during the week, the legislative the radar and judicial president, judicial president data radar, excuse me, from another will be shown. What we have this last week at Solo Negocios Radio, well, basically on Monday, I talked about, uh, about REPSE, the specific uh, speci specialized services and uh, construction registry for outsourcing and its duties. On Thursday, Emmanuel Garcia and Luis Enrique Guterres Casas talk about context topics. On Wednesday, I talked about monetary policy informality in Mexico, overregulated economy, and some indicators. On, th on Thursday, UTEC had an interview about the importance of continual education or secondary education, as you call it in the US. And on Friday, I talked about uh, economic trends and the different radars of ANADE. Well, basically what we can see in this week is that we're having a flattened economy in terms of the indicators, uh, the recovery in Mexico, obviously, but also influenced by the flattened recovery in the US in employment and also with some pressures on prices. So this implies a lot of, uh, to, for decision making, for example, a lot of advising. So obviously, if you're interested in our services, please feel free to contact us are the different means that you can see on the screen. And I hope that you have a great week. Thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.